What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we'll be fixing up the Enduro car and we are gonna get doing a few things on the Thunder car. We've had a bit of a change in plans on what we're gonna do suspension wise. So we're gonna be pulling the rear end back out and a few other things. Well, I forgot to press record, but I worked some magic, sorta. So I mentioned in the previous video, I had to replace this brake line because this is the one that Chris cut when he uh, was racing the car in the, to in the skid plate race a couple months ago. Here with the skid. Oh yeah, the skid. So got that replaced and like I mentioned I broke the bleeder off. Now that right there makes for a good day. Thanks buddy. Good old settling torch. So got that out. Gonna run up to the parts store and hopefully get a new bleeder. And we can get all the brakes bled on this thing and then it's just up to fixing some cosmetic stuff. Switching into different seat and she's ready for next year. Went up to the parts store. Tried to get the uh, broken bleeder for the Enduro car. Went to O'Reilly's, Advanced, AutoZone, and I called Napa. All the places close to me, nobody has it. AutoZone is the only place that can order it, so looks like the Enduro car is not getting done in this video again. Uh, hopefully, we'll try and get it done in the next video for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get them ordered. Hopefully, I'll get them this week and uh, get that freaking thing finished up, ready to rip. But for now, we're just going to keep plugging away on the Enduro car. I don't have much I can do right now, but I'm going to continue to rip all the wiring and all the miscellaneous stuff out of the car because we're redoing all that anyway. Alrighty, got the jack stands underneath, out from underneath the rear end, so I'm going to yank the shocks and the upper trailing arms that we fought so hard to get on, take them off so we can drop this rear end out of here. out a lot easier than it goes in <laughs> now I just need to get down there and unhook the brake line and I think we'll be ready to drop the rear end all right crazy hair don't care all right y'all we're pretty close here let me find a way to get you guys in there to see uh, that right there we gotta take that off get the brake lines out Drop this bad boy. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was so much smoother than I imagined. Nice. Okay, y'all. I think it's time to explain why we pulled the rear end out after you guys seen in two freaking videos we were fighting that one bolt. And the reason that is, is honestly, the color of the car that we want to paint it, the orange rear end just would not have looked right. And uh, couldn't really paint it real well up in the car. And the most important reason that we took it out was I did mention in the last video that these right here are going to have to be cut out. Don't have to be, but the way that we're going to do it with the buckets has to be cut out and we got to weld in. You guys will see a bucket with a bolt we can uh, press tension down on the springs. So it was just going to be much easier to do that with the rear end out. So we decided just to go ahead and pull it out since we want to paint it anyway. Also, I did want to mention, we are planning on painting the uh, roll cage frame chassis red, like a kind of like a deep, like tractor red. And then we are going to do the body black and possibly another color. We don't know, maybe solid black, but figured I'd ask you guys, let you guys maybe choose a little bit about what color we should go, get an idea. Like I said, I'm thinking red chassis, black body, but 
those are my two favorite colors and I feel like that would look super sick black rear end obviously black front suspension parts all that stuff so figured I'd throw that in there let you guys let, let me know what you guys think and uh, maybe I could use some of your ideas the gauges including the tack out of there this is where we're running new you guys will see the gauges we're getting here real soon going to a swap meet uh, next weekend so hopefully we can pick some up there otherwise we'll be going to summit.com but I'm gonna continue to pull all these out I'm gonna cut these brackets out of here because you guys haven't seen yet but I got new switch panels uh, for Christmas for the race car some nicer ones than these homemade ones they'd work but doing away with them ugly things and get all this wiring up out of the way. seen we got all the gauges and the switch panels out got those welds cleaned up there so when we go to put in the new switch packs it's good to go plus we got to clean it up for paint anyway so got all that out got all the wires out so that helps it's a lot of headache out of the way already so once we go in there to start painting up and whatnot but like I said this video is gonna kind of be just bouncing around just a bunch of little stuff we need to get done um, right now we're waiting on like I mentioned earlier the upper spring buckets for the rear end got one of the ball joints for the top but we're waiting for the other three and i think that is it for pretty much all the suspension tie rods are already new we are going to do the inners and we do have to change the uh sway bar link on this side and if you guys can see this trying to explain this to you guys uh spring just rolls around but if you look, this, this puck right here that has threads, it is a spacer pretty much that sits on the chassis there. And when you jack the car off the ground, take the weight off of the spring, you can actually adjust that puck to raise and lower the car. That's necessary to you know adjust the ride height in this class. So we do need to get those welded up in there, but that'll be in a later video. But like I said, we're waiting on the rest of the front suspension and the spring bucket parts. And that is coming from our guys over at Hangar 18 Race Cars, which I will be putting their link in the description. But yeah, they, they can hook you guys up. Some of the best prices I've found around. So definitely go check them out if you guys are looking for any parts on these race cars. But for now, we're just going to keep plugging along and getting everything we can done. While I'm thinking about it, since we don't have too much to do, I was over at my buddy Brad's house last night, the guy that's pretty much helped me out a ton with the car and direction and whatnot. He was telling me that he was going to add some protection, head protection on his uh, Thunder car. And I'm sort of liking the idea that he kind of explained his is very similar to this cage. And he kind of wants to add something like this, a bar with a few bars like this. And since we got our time, some time on our hands, sorry headphone users, since we got some time on our hands, I think I might end up doing the same thing. But before I can do that, I need to see how much room I got to get in here. So, gotta see how much room this fat boy's got to get in. So, if you guys remember when we were building the Enduro car, that seat we have in there is a loner. However, the brand new seat I just ordered it isn't in yet. But the brand new seat we got for this car is the exact same seat that's in that car. So we got to return that anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and yank it out of there. 
and set it in this car and start mocking it up so I can get it ready for the new seat when it comes in. Also, I'd like to see how those head protectors are gonna look and if I can fit in and out with those there because I'd like to add them too. tight because we built the car around the seat. <laughs> side it is oh you bastard thing and see what it feels like. definitely feels pretty good I can tell when the steering wheel is on on there when the steering wheel is on there I can tell that I've got some rubbage on my thighs which we'll have to figure that out no big deal so the seats gonna sit actually pretty much like that so we're gonna have to do a little bit of fabricating to get the seat mounted properly no big deal. Ain't nothing we haven't already done. So, with that being said, get my seat sort of there. Seems like. I think we can get away with adding some of these braces in here like we wanted to. That's going to pretty much be there. Well, heck yeah. That worked out good. All right, y'all. So I feel pretty productive as far as what we got done today. You guys seen we got quite a bit taken out that had to be. Like I said, we're still waiting on parts up there. Got this sitting in there, so we got an idea of how I'm going to put those in. But got the tape measure. Going to measure up what metal we need for here. The X's and double check I'm not going to need any more steel. And get that jotted down so we can go get some this weekend. Before we wrap up the video, there is one more thing I want to do while I'm at the shop here. And that's get this old fuel line off. Got no idea what could be in it and it's not the fuel line I want to use plus it's not routed correctly the rules for this class say that you have to run a pipe through the car and run the fuel line through it it can't be under the car or exposed through the car so we got to do that so I'm gonna yank this out because I am building a pretty much brand new engine for this race car and I don't want to send 
whatever might be through those fuel lines through that engine so we're gonna go ahead and just get rid of that get some new fuel line plus we got to run the new pipe and reroute it so let's yank that off just to say I do know that you're not supposed to use regular wrenches on a &N, but I don't have any AN wrenches right now. Also, I'm using new fittings, so I don't care. First, sorry for the heater in the background in today's video. Hopefully it sounds all right, but it's way too cold in the shop right now. And we're waiting to get the used oil furnace fixed. But anyway, that's gonna pretty much wrap up today's video. Thanks for tuning in for another one. And man, stay plugged in guys, cause I'm telling you what, we've got a ton of parts on the way. Uh, man, we just got a ton of stuff planned for this car. It's, it's I'm not gonna lie. I was I was a little worried, you know, last night. I was just thinking about all we had to do um, to get the get the car ready for this coming race season. And financially, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of work, but thankfully, I've got a lot of people like Chris, my buddy Brad, the guys over at Hangar 18 Race Cars, and just everybody in the community really comes together and uh, really helps you out. So it's nice to know that there's people still out there that are willing to help you out, guys. So. Like I said, stay plugged in. We are plugging in this. We got plans for Zeus. It's gonna be sweet. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. If you like these videos, smash the like button, and also, most importantly, hit the bell notification so you're notified every time we get a video up of the race car or anything sweet we do on the channel. Thanks, guys.